Okay, so as far as the training goes, how's this going to work? Well, it's going to be really similar to the way we did LEPFET. If you guys are familiar with that, uh, many of the smog check technicians are. Uh, basically, we'll have some sort of um, training that's easily available. We're looking at basically doing some online training um, involving videos and hopefully some interactive uh, based stuff to really make the training simple for technicians to be able to get out there and, and take it at their leisure and, and, and what timing works for them instead of having them have to go out and sit in the classroom to take the training. So we're trying to, again, simplify this because we're looking at low volumes. So we're trying to make it uh, work well for all the folks out there. Um, so we're still, we're still gathering all the details on exactly how we're going to do the training. So if there are people out there that have specific ideas on, on what they'd like to see in the training, we'd be more than happy to entertain those. Um, we've just kind of begun gathering all of our materials together and looking at um, what this is all going to look like. Um, I also wanted to throw a kind of comment here. It keeps coming up at the workshops, um, and it, it's kind of a training question. Uh, the, the referee is, is always available to shops that need... Uh, that have specific questions or, or cars that they're not quite sure what to do with. So for diesels, as we roll the program in, uh, we will be training the referees with diesel-specific information so that they do know what to do um, when we come to these inspection procedures where there may be some areas where vehicles are borderline or something like that. The referee is there um, as, as a tiebreaker or as an intermediary to, to help get vehicles through the program. So I did want to point that out. Um, eventually, training will be rolled into the clean air car course, but will not be for the next year or two due to the amount of lag time there is um, on that particular piece of training. So now we're going to go through the test procedures and how those work. So we're kind of transitioning out of the basic information about AB 1488 and all into the actual test procedure. So the basic outline of this test procedure um, that ARB and BAR have worked together to develop is three parts. There's a visual inspection, um, there's an OBD test, and there's the visible smoke test. So these, these are all very similar to gasoline, and as we dive into them, I'll explain what the differences and similarities are as we kind of go through this. And this is kind of the, the big piece we wanted you guys to kind of get out of this particular presentation, is to really look at these test procedures and how these are going to apply to the vehicles that are involved. Um, so the other thing I wanted to say about this is, you know, ARB tested um, over 150 diesel-powered vehicles um, to come up with the test procedures and, and, and help make sure that not only did it not break vehicles, that it was compatible with the test, but that, you know, we weren't uh, failing the wrong vehicles, we were passing everything. So they tested um, every one of the, all the engine families that were involved in diesel. So we did run the, run the gamut of this thing all the way down to the small cars up to the largest trucks that were, that were going to be testing. Um, We've also done roadside testing on a little under 150 uh, vehicles, again, to test that compatibility of the inspection procedures and make sure that everything was working on uh, on-road vehicles. So a when, when ARB did their study, they actually went out and surveyed uh, consumers and asked them, you know, bring your car in, we'll, we'll uh, you know, give you a tank of gas and some, some other basic incentives. Um, so they they looked at some pretty nice nice trucks and, and cars. And so Roadside kind of gets those on-road ones, and in and, and between the combination of those, we, we didn't see any problems. So it, it was working pretty well. Uh, we also did a dealership study. Uh, we saw about another 50 uh, diesel vehicles in there um, during some budget times that we couldn't, we couldn't do much else. So we did go out and check those and uh, check the emission components on those and saw kind of what was for sale out there. And, uh, and again, did the test procedures on those and made sure that everything was okay um, as far as all that goes. Um, in addition to that, uh, Barr went out and purchased uh, um, a couple of diesel trucks, and you guys will see a lot of the pictures of those. We did a lot of testing on those vehicles um, to look at the aftermarket components that are available out there and really understand you know, what we may be seeing in the smog check program um, at a little closer level um, so that we could really uh, get down what, what we're really asking people to do. So we'll get that a little bit more here later. Um, I also wanted to point out that the visual and OBD tests are, were required by AB 1488, um, and the visible smoke test is required by AB uh, 1870, which also applies to diesel. So the visual inspection, what is that going to look like? Well, very similar to gasoline. Um, and and I'll go over kind of the, 
the, the basic things about that are similar, you know, you got EGR, you got fuel injection, you got the basic sensors, vacuum lines, those sorts of things. The things you guys are used to with gasoline, will st you'll still be checking on diesel. Um, the new types of things you'll be looking at are like the CDR, the crankcase depression regulator, the diesel oxidation cat or DOC, the diesel particulate filter, the DPF, um, NOx absorber, some other after treatments, some of those basic things that will be in the training eventually. Um, those are the new types of things you guys will be seeing out there. Um, obviously, most of the diesels have turbochargers uh, um, and, it, I mean, superchargers, and so those will be um, something turbo. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> so you'll be seeing those out there. Um, the types of things you won't be seeing, uh, we won't be doing evaporative testing. Um, there, we won't be doing um, a normal tailpipe test. We won't be doing gas cap testing. There won't be doing timing tests, and we won't be doing liquid leak tests. So it kind of gives you guys an idea of what that visual inspection will um, encompass there. The OBD check. That will be uh, basically the bulb check. You know, does it, is, is the bulb burn out or not? Um, is, the, is the mill on or off? Is, so is the OBD system failing it or not? And then you'll be plugging into the analyzer into the vehicle and checking for codes if it's, uh, if it's non-CAN. So on to the visible smoke test. So there's three parts to the visible smoke test, and this is kind of the, the tougher part of the inspection um, for techs to get through. Um, the first two being, one, the, the idle tailpipe test and the idle crankcase test, which you guys currently do on gasoline vehicles. Um, now there's a third part, which is different than gasoline vehicles, which is what we're calling the bar snap test, just to distinguish it from the SAE snap test um, and I'll go into that a little bit here. The, uh, the SAE SNAP test as we were testing it was compatible with, with basically all of the, um, the you know, 8,500 and, and, and up vehicles, but some of the lighter vehicles like the, uh, um, the Jeep Liberty and, and so forth, we did find some issues when you ramped them up to the very high RPMs that you hit with the SAE test. We found some as you're, as you're bumping up against those rev limiters and things, you actually create uh, some artificial smoke. So whereas the vehicle may be passing, you, you, you could cause some issues. So we, so we backed off down to this bar snap test. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into the bar snap test a little bit here later, but basically the idle test is exactly the same as you guys do on gasoline. So the engine's running in step one. Step two, exit the vehicle, look at the tailpipe directly. Step three, um, look at the tailpipe for 10 seconds. Pretty simple. Um, fail the vehicle if any smoke is observed during the 10 seconds. So diesels don't smoke at idle is what we found during the studies. They'll, they'll smoke slightly during the snap. We'll get into that here in a minute. But at idle, you're not, you shouldn't be seeing any smoke or else there's something wrong with the vehicle and it's a failure. Um, so the idle crankcase test, again, it's exactly the same as gasoline. Vehicle running, normal operating temperature, step one. Step two, exit the vehicle, directly view the engine compartment and locate the crankcase system components. Step three, watch the crankcase system, visible smoke for 10 seconds. Um, fail, and then step four, fail a vehicle if any visible smoke is observed during the 10 seconds. Okay, so now the bar snap test, the new piece of the test. How does that work? Well, basically you're just gonna push the accelerator pedal very quickly, directly from idle, all the way down to the floor, back off, and you should be hitting between two and 3,000 RPMs. Some of the Chevy trucks that are, that are throttled by wire and things, you, you may not go all the way down to the floor. Um, we, we have found that if you, you have a little bit of a heavy foot and you're going for the top end of the range, you may go a little over 3,000. So you're going to either do it a little quicker or not go way down to the floor. So the goal is to hit right between that two and 3,000 RPM range to keep the test nice and consistent for all the shops. Um, then immediately, you know, release the accelerator paddle, re, re, the accelerator